Uh, I'm an author and uh, I live in Mayfair and I'm currently engaged in uh, writing about the history of eccentricity and the extraordinary women who uh, created the uh, intellectual salons that are so much part of uh, cultural and intellectual life in London to this day. Mayfair eccentrics. Say that again. Mayfair eccentrics. awarded the eccentric club has been going for a few hundred years and I was awarded the most eccentric uh, uh, British thinker by Prince Philip and uh, this is largely to do with my uh, unique research into the, uh, uh, the how eccentricity came to be a quintessential aspect of the British character and so much part of our culture and uh, our intellectual uh, life and vigour. Yes. Well, uh, it's an extraordinary honour, um, particularly because it is, uh, well, it, it is uh, knowledge and youth together combine uh, what infuses me life and what I believe to be the most important uh, issues facing any adult in the world today, um, inspiring the youth of today to cut a line of their own, which is what eccentricity is all about, to cut a line of their own um, through uh, their field, chosen field of endeavour, rather than following the, the uh, well-trodden pathways of the past, in the shadows of the past, because those pathways are no longer there in many cases. And we live in an age in which we must stand out simply to fit in. Absolutely. Well, I spent my life in Mayfair bringing up my family and I wrote uh, eight contemporary women's fiction books. But I've, then I wrote, when my children were away at boarding school and up at Oxford, I wrote uh, some teen books, a series of fine teen books, five teen books uh, set in boarding school. Um, but um, And they are really about uh, uh, encouraging uh, young people to have the courage uh, to again this cutting a line of their own not trying to not try we have to stand out to fit in we and uh, to achieve uh, our academic and social success 
is bound up in what is inside of ourselves. And this is the difference between knowledge and information. We live in, we, they say it's the age of information. We're bombarded with information. The youth of today are bombarded with information. But there's a diff, much of it misinformation, but there's a big difference between information and knowledge. A child's mind is not a vessel to be filled, but it is... Uh, uh, a flame to ignite and we need to excite young people and knowledge is exciting and knowledge isn't to be found out there trawling the internet knowledge unlike information is something that comes from within ourselves it is the discovery of the ability to use our own minds and unleash the power and it, that is inside our own minds so we very much need to i think differentiate between information and knowledge uh in order and and to encourage and uh and facilitate young people today in order to firstly define the difference between knowledge and information and to have the courage and and encouragement to find the knowledge within themselves. They would be defined as feminist literature. Uh, uh, they, they came out in the 90s and early noughties, my adult, con my contemporary women's fiction books, and that they weren't mass fiction. They were uh, published under headline review, uh, which was the intellectual side of that. And they were very much about women seeking, their, cutting a line of their own in careers such as law, and uh, the art world, uh, both of which at the time were still very much gentlemen's clubs, if you like. And my characters uh, overthrew those stereotypes. But my most successful books have been my teen fiction books. Um, well, that would be uh, Pulling Princes. Here's a copy here. Um, but they're published in all languages or European languages, certainly, and many Southeast Asian languages. And they are set in boarding schools, um, and they are read by children and parents alike who are considering boarding school, but also they tap into the dream that all children have of running away and, and seeking their own life, but uh, amongst their peers. But uh, boarding school is a great place for children where they're encouraged to uh, be themselves as individuals, to discover themselves as individuals, and have the, the time and resources put in their hands. But uh, they're fish out, of water story, or fish out of water stories in which the heroines triumph. But my opus, if you like, is May, uh, Mayfair Eccentrics, which came about when I was diagnosed with a brain tumour in 2013, and I was bedridden for three years. And uh, the British archives and the British Library were kind enough to put into my hands un uh, hitherto unseen uh, source material from the 15 and 1600s, and I have been privileged to uh, read these manuscripts and uh, to discover firstly what life was like for women and children in that era and what took place in that era that really suddenly catapulted Britain from the medieval into an age of enlightenment in the 1660s. 
because unlike the rest of Europe, our Age of Enlightenment was the 1660s. And three of my most inspirational uh, eccentrics uh, were, did their work, great work in Mayfair. Those three being uh, Afro Ben, um, whom Virginia Woolf said all women should lay flowers on the tomb of Afro Ben, for she, it is she who gave women the right to speak our mind. Ignatius Sancho, born on a slave ship, who at the age of seven was uh, taken on as a protege by Lord Montague and became in his own right a dandy of the era and wrote the musical backdrop to the Regency. He was painted in his own right by Gainsborough and lived to, ran and was the key figure as a slave who became a free man and a leading figure of his time he was the leading figure of the abolitionist movement who put an end to slavery in America through his very moving writings. And last but not leastly, Edward de Bono, another Mayfair eccentric, who has taught us all how it is possible to cut a line of your own, to be true to yourself whilst uh, pursuing your endeavors in your chosen field of knowledge. Ah, the honor is mine. Uh, thank you so much. The pleasure's been mine. I hope, I desperately hope you do. I'm very honoured and thank you so much. It's been more than an honour. It's been a joy. Did we get it?